Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and the market just flew, or XRP just flew past 28 cents. I think it's somewhere sitting close to it right now. Now it didn't do it on on Coin Market Cap. It was right at, but you know we've talked about how Fiat Leak kind of goes up, is ahead of Coin Market Cap, and we're sitting right at about 28 cents right now. I wanted to I wanted to make you, make sure you paid attention to this. I haven't seen us as high as 290 billion in quite a long time, folks. This total market cap is creeping up further and further. I also want you to take a mental note of the fact that there is only $12 billion in XRP right now. I want you to make a mental note of that for later in this video because I'm going to show you an, uh, an interview with Miguel Viaz that might blow your mind a little bit. Okay. Um, let's drop this 28 cents. I like it. We, this, we keep on coming back. And also I forgot to mention Bitcoin crossed 10,000 again, and that's a big deal. I'm about to show I'm about to make that point too. I tweeted this out. Bitcoin back over 10 K is good for, for us all. Uh, let's see what kind of traction that tweets getting a lot. Um, so yeah. Once, see, here's the, here's the thing, folks, those of you that are new to this, here's the thing. When Bitcoin crosses 10K, that's a psychological, as much as anything, that's a psychological number. It's also a number that the media can run with. All, we've seen this market since the beginning of the year start to take off in a lot of different areas, Bitcoin, XRP, a lot of different digital assets. But we really haven't seen the FOMO come in. We really haven't seen the traditional financial media come in. In fact, I complained about it online and copied. I copied CNBC, CNBC, Fast Money, you name it, and copied them all in. Say, so why aren't you guys covering this? Um, and it, you know they're they're not covering it because they're scared to death of it <laughs> because their precious stock market um, is on the verge of collapse. But um, Eventually, they have no choice but to but to put the headline out there. And 10K is usually what makes it happen, a, a good round number like that. And here we have it from David DePriest. Listen to this and listen very close as they get towards the end of this video. Oh. You know, we're over 10,000. Because of some of the safety concerns that tell you anything about the market. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of good things have happened in Bitcoin this year. One is, you know, the happening's happening in May, but we've broken. The 200 days, so we're back in a bull market. There is the corona risk and political tensions. And I think and last year Washington what? killed the coin it, rally, but with the election just sort of not sure. in the purview of Washington, so I think so Bitcoin can rally can, very strongly stronger. Well, I was almost going to ask him how strong and and, and, and I don't know if that's too speculative. Uh, well, I can give you a you, sort of a mathematical stat. When Bitcoin breaks about right. its 200 days, which it did about two weeks ago, Go. It's average six month gain is about, about 190 percent. So this would so point to all time high like, sometime this year. Let's yeah. see what, what For 30, goes up. <laughs> or yeah. 27 would be the. So which is going to be first to 30 down or, or Bitcoin? That's your question, I guess. Yeah, the uh, uh, well, my guess would be Dow, but if I had to say, you know, what is first to 30,000, I would wow. pick the Dow. I'm sorry. How about that? See, and she's sorry that he, that she asked because she doesn't want to hear that Bitcoin's going to outperform the stock market because that's her job. <laughs> well, maybe I can take her seat when digital assets replace her job if she's not going to talk about it. <laughs> well, anyway, move, but, but the important thing here is that, look, still, whether you like it or not, Bitcoin, it, um, it, no, it's not going to have, it's not going to be like that as we go forward. And you'll see Miguel Viaz talking later in this video, and you'll see part of the reason you're not, XRP will not have its entire wagon hitched to what Bitcoin prices do. Not in the, not in the short to long run even. Um, okay. My wife's calling. I'm going to have to call her after this video. Sometimes I have to do that. Okay. Let me see if I can get Okay, so moving on. Now, this 
was covered by Brad Combs this morning in his live stream, and I wanted to cover it as well. It came from XRP Thor this morning. It's a sheet here, but I'm going to show you where it comes from. This is the International Telecommunication Union Financial Inclusion Global Initiative. And it's from uh, November 2019. But I want to show you who this is. The International Telecommunication Union is the United Nations specialized agency in the field. Okay. Um, and, I, and I'll show, talk more about that in a minute. But first, I want to take you to page 70. And if you want to go check this out, it's page 70 and 73 that are the, the ones I'm going to look at. And this is what Brad Combs talked about. Consensus protocols in use in various DLT types. Um, exhibit 2, consensus protocols in use in various DLT types. And it talks about all the different digital assets, proof of work, public, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zcash, Monero, uh, proof of stake, Ethereum, Tendermint. And then it goes down and put all, all the different ones. You get down to Ripple consensus algor algorithm, federated Ripple consensus algorithm. The Ripple consensus algorithm proceeds in rounds. In each round, four steps occur. Initially, each server takes all valid transactions it has seen prior to the beginning of the consensus round that have not already been applied. It is declared to be public in the form of a list known as a candidate set. The server has the response. I'm not going to go through the rest of that. You get it. But I also wanted to point this part to you. To add data to a blockchain, so-called consensus mechanisms have evolved that require a minor validator to prove that they have undertaken the task of being able to add the blockchain to the chain. Bitcoin and Ethereum for now uses proof of work. Now we've talked on this channel for the last year and a half about how proof of work doesn't work and everybody knows it. We already know that Ethereum is trying to create, create Ethereum 2.0. I don't know how on earth you would change Bitcoin from proof of work because it's supposedly decentralized. I don't know if that's going to happen, right? Um, but for some reason in this paper, they say Bitcoin and Ethereum in parentheses for now use proof of work. So I think something is known. But anyway, let's go to 73. Financial systems, interbank transfers. Crypto assets can act as a bridge between fiat currencies that allows financial institutions to access liquidity on demand without having to pre-fund accounts in the destination country. For example, cryptocurrency network Ripple is using its global RippleNet payment system to connect a number of developing countries together to undertake interbank transfers through the XRP cryptocurrency. The solution, especially since it bypasses SWIFT, is touted as, as the solution to de-risking de inserting liquidity, remember that word, into markets by enabling remittance flows to countries that have been impacted by removal and or refusal of correspondent banking relationships as well as facilitating trade finance. There's that trade finance word again. Ripple's XRP asset, you now this is written back when we had XRapid and, and we weren't talking on-demand demand liquidity. Um, it's been placed for interbank transfer or final, finalized. Um, let's see, portions of the payment that rely on XRP, two to three seconds, da, da, da. Okay, we get that. All right, let's go back to what we were talking about here. The uh, this is is this was done by International Telecommunication Union, uh, and this is United States. I mean, United Nations agency. Well, let's look at the United Nations. United Nations is headquartered in New York City. Their other main offices are in Geneva, <laughs> Nairobi, Vienna, The Hague. But Geneva, I told you the other day. What did I tell you? Geneva is a financial hub of the world. Right? This is what I showed you the other day. Geneva, Switzerland is considered a financial hub of the world. This is displayed in their airport. Do you think it's a coincidence that they feel the need to have these digital assets on display for all of the businessmen and government, um, government, uh, the guys running all of these organizations, the United Nations or whoever in Geneva, Switzerland, for some reason, they thought that it was it was uh, necessary to have this in their airport for all those people, those important people coming through that airport to to be abreast of what's going on in the digital asset markets. I don't think these are coincidences, folks. Uh, then XRP Big Time sent me this. 
Canada Joint Venture launches stablecoin pegged to the Canadian dollar, announced earlier today. QCAD is built on top of the Ethereum blockchain and it's based on the ERC20 standard. And then we've got this from Spring Development. Spring Development, that's right, Ethereum Denver will be there with uh, War Paul, who's Warren Paul Anderson, and then uh, Mahoney Turnbull, um, whoever that is, some Spring Developments to help bridge XRP and Ethereum on the Interledger. So you see what's in the works, folks, but Spring is getting active in getting out there also. Next, um, regulate this from the IMF. Regulators need to continuously monitor the crypto asset landscape to understand the direction of industry developments. wonder why the IMF is so concerned about all this is because they know it's a thing, folks, and it's not going away. Now, um, I wanted to let you know, Bitru, Curious Wang from Bitru, he's, it says, got anything to ask Bitru CEO Curious Wang? Come down to Twitter next Tuesday. That's today at 6.30 p.m. Or Eastern time, I believe, folks. He's going to do a, a live AMA, um, and he's giving away some BTR. I have no stakes in this, folks. I show you, listen, just so you know, I show you what a lot of these companies are doing, like the, these guys, and Sologenic and all, because they, they're either XRP friendly or they're involved in the XRP with the XRP ledger. I show a lot of these different companies, but I'm not, I'm not getting anything from Curious Wing or anything like that. I just want to make you aware of that. Okay. All right, now this is an older video. This is from February 14th, 2018. This is with um, Miguel Valles, who's from Ripple. The Bar Barut Crypto Club, this is, um, Z and the Zicklin Investment Club is proud to announce um, Miguel Valles. Anyway, these guys, this guy's interviewing Miguel Valles. There's a couple of things I want you to get out of this. I'm going to show you the part where he, what he's actually talking about. He's about to tell you, this is the second time, the first time I showed you a tweet where he said, he said that, that his goal is for XRP to have the same liquidity as a fiat currency. Now, if you don't know what that means as an XRP holder, if you can't decipher what that might mean for you and your pocketbook, then, then I can't do much for you because this is what he, this is what he's talking about. And this is the, I showed it to you in a tweet. Now he's saying it in an interview that his goal, and he used an, in the tweet, he used an example. He wants it to be as liquid as the, something like the Swiss franc. I think it was him, the Swiss franc, or I think the Singapore dollar. And I've heard Chris Larson say the same thing. If you want to understand just how big what your investment represents, this is what their goal is. And these are people that achieve their goals. These people at Ripple are not jack legs. These are like winners. These are the winners in life's lottery. These are not the guys that lose. So if they were just 10% successful in their goal, which is to make XRP as liquid as a fiat currency. And he said, and he says, he's talking in terms of the top Swiss franc. Listen to what he says here. Here you go. So he wants the liquidity of XRP to be like a fiat currency. Now look at the most liquid fiat currencies, the US dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, the great uh, British pound, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. And these are the comparisons, folks. These are the comparisons that they are making at Ripple. I've heard the similar things from Chris Larson. This is how big the plan is, folks. 
Imagine what you hold XRP being as liquid as the US dollar or the Swiss franc. What do you think that, what do you think they're trying to tell you? They can't come out and say, give you a number, but you, you figure it out. You do the math. This is not that complicated. These guys have massive goals and Brad Garlinghouse himself says they're going to drive massive demand to XRP. All right. Finally, I wanted to show you this. Steve Golbrinson sent me this and told me that he is doing an XRP meetup. He and his wife, I believe. They're doing it in St. Um, Petersburg, Florida on March 4th at 7.45 Eastern Time. The location is Thirsty First. That's 119 First Avenue, North St. Pete, Florida, 33701. Brad Combs will be on the big screen live. And I even went and found this Thirsty First. And I can tell you, just in case you're, th you're hungry on your way, they have, or you're thirsty, they do have margaritas. And they also, they also have wings. So if I was down there, I would go, but I'm not down that way. Some of these guys that we know in the community that are down in Florida, they may want to go have some wings and a margarita on me. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family to uh, go to Steve Goldbrinson's uh, meetup in St. Pete, Florida on Wednesday, March 4th night. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday, March 4th at um, 7.45 Eastern Time at the Thirsty First in St. Petersburg, Florida. Thank you for listening.